This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 326, Professional Boundaries. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. Now, before I launch into this week's content and the exact information that you can also use to better serve your hypnosis clients, as well as help you to grow your hypnosis business. Before I get into that, let's give a small update as to what the Lynette family has been up to. That basically for the last four or five months, really just about four months, we have now lived in six different homes. That the journey was, we briefly moved into a rental in Northern Virginia to sell our Northern Virginia house, to then travel down to North Carolina, visit with my parents for about two or three weeks, to then rent on the on the east coast of Florida, in New Smyrna Beach, right around Daytona, to then rent on the west coast of Florida, the Gulf side, at Clearwater. And this is the very first recording that's happening in our home now in Orlando as we've moved everything down. A slightly different recording, though, because today I'm once again in the corner of a guest bedroom, as I have been the last couple of recordings, because tomorrow morning a group of contractors is coming in and ripping out the walls of the space that's going to be my home studio, home office, putting in soundproofing, putting the walls and extra lighting back up. And you'll see tons of images and stories around that as it's gradually being built out. So a bit of a journey in terms of keeping the business running. I've been actively seeing clients. I've been actively doing my private consulting, doing the projects for people inside of the various online communities that I run. And teaching classes, kind of proving we can do our work from anywhere around the world that remember, in the words of Howard Cooper, the change doesn't occur in the room, the change occurs in the client's head. So we've got much more flexibility in the work as professional hypnotists than many of us have thought to be possible over the years. And we find ourselves now in an incredible renaissance of online opportunities, which kind of lends itself to this week's topic, that of professional boundaries. And briefly, I want to give a bit of a positive disclaimer to this week's episode, which would be that for the most part, the work that we do is rather straightforward, is not that complicated. And this is, yes, I know, coming from the guy who named his business Work Smart Hypnosis. So for the most part, what you're about to hear me speak of, you know, there may be some slightly negative 10 stories inside of what I'm about to share, but these are the extreme minority. And just for disclosure here. This was inspired by a moment that someone who is going through the current Work Smart Hypnosis live training, she had an instance with a client, and we did give some good advice in terms of how to sort of climb out of the challenge that arose inside of that session. Yet at the end of the day, I've got Richard Nongard as a guest trainer on this current event. We both kind of agreed, yeah, we wouldn't have taken that client. So the themes this week, we're going to talk a bit on scope of practice. We're going to talk a bit on managing your own time and stick around toward the end of this week's recording because it's about time we give a slight update, a small modification to the concept of client-centered hypnosis. And no, I'm not about to say we need to get rid of client-centered hypnosis. No, which for those of you that this term is new to, this is what we all ought to be doing, matching the process to the client as opposed to the client to the process, as opposed to saying, here's my three or four or five or however many step process. And no matter what the heck you come in the door for, I'm just going to run you through this cookie cutter system. No, let's stop doing that. And that's kind of fallen by the wayside in modern evolution of the profession. That's no longer really the popular model. In fact, most of the people, it's funny that half the people who come into Work Smart Hypnosis live and online, which is a certification training, half of them are brand new. And the other half are people who are looking to grow out of rigid protocols and scripted techniques or even just find greater flexibility in the work. So again, this whole thing about rigid protocols is kind of becoming a bit outdated and less of a conversation. It's kind of like, you know, we all kind of get the point now. Yeah, we, we don't want to be reading scripts. We get it. You can stop posting that in Facebook groups. We understand. We need more transcripts. Model the work that someone actually did in their session. This is why I publish transcripts of the work that I put out there. But again, back to this instance in the class, this example of how do we set those boundaries in advance 
so that we don't run into these challenges. So once again, stick around to the end of this week's episode, because it's about time we give a small update to the whole philosophy of client-centered hypnosis. Briefly, I mentioned Work Smart Hypnosis live and online. If you're listening to this in either March or June of 2021, we're about maybe two-thirds of the way sold out right now. We typically sell out a few days in advance of the event, but you can find all the details at WorkSmartHypnosisLive.com. So my approach to hypnosis is based in hypnotic phenomenon. Your client needs to feel the change occurring to validate that something is happening. This is why my approach is very heavy in hypnotic phenomenon and validating the hypnotic state for the client. Let's get rid of the virus of, I felt relaxed, I don't know if I was hypnotized, and then all the applications, all the change strategies as a result of that. It's about building a universal approach to change so that you don't fall prey to the game of, I need a script for this, I need a script for that, or I don't know what to do for this. The next event is kicking off the end of June 2021. Once again, bringing on Richard Nongard as a guest instructor to share the stage too with his brand of client-centered hypnosis. If you want to be networking in the medical profession, if you want to be getting referrals, this is the dialogue you need to be having, and that's why I'm very happy to have Richard on for the event once more. So again, at the time of this recording, we've got maybe a third of the spots still open before we sell out. Get all the details, lock in your spot. There's a generous payment plan at WorkSmartHypnosisLive.com. And with that, let's jump directly into this week's episode for the first time, recording from Orlando, at least in this room, until we move downstairs to the other one. Soundproofing is going to be gorgeous. Here we go, episode number 326 professional boundaries. Now, on the topic of professional boundaries, I need to begin with a story. And this is a story not of my own, but of a friend of mine who is a professional massage therapist, that she was in the Northern Virginia area, and she began to realize that Mondays and Tuesdays, she was at this one office in Arlington. Wednesdays and Thursdays, she was at an office right in the middle of Washington, D.C., and then on Fridays and every other Saturday, she was in an office down around Springfield, Virginia, which is actually about where my last office in Virginia was. So it's at the end of looking at her schedule two years in, she kind of, you know, turns on a stopwatch in her car. And she realizes that she had been commuting for upwards of like five or six hours a week, five or six hours a week, sitting in a car, simply going to different locations. Now, her schedule was booked full, which keep that in mind, because it's often when business is at its best, as I like to say, that's the time to throw a wrench into the machine and just say, let's see what happens. Greetings from Orlando. So she throws the wrench into the machine to suddenly announce to all of her existing clients, I am now only operating out of this one office Monday through Friday. Here's a link to my scheduling. Now, as you might expect, there were some people who chose to no longer work with her. And as you might expect, surprisingly, there were many people who were pleased because, well, she was much closer to them and she had better flexibility because now it wasn't just two days a week in that one location. What you may be surprised to find, though, is she never saw a single drop-off in her calendar. Now, as we often would say inside of hypnotic business systems, only test one variable at a time. So in the course of this journey, she never once raised her prices. However, she was able to add a little bit more time to her availability because, again, she wasn't sitting in a car for six plus hours a week, if you're lucky, in that part of Northern Virginia and dealing with traffic and much closer to home. The drive home was now basically about, you know, three minutes away. So because she was able to add more time, by setting up this boundary in advance, what happened was she actually did increase her income. Now, I want you to take this story to heart, though, for a moment, because there is a time cost to everything. So I used to get up about 10 years ago and talk about how I made a six-figure income my first year in hypnosis without spending any money on advertising, which, yes, I paid for a website. Yes, I paid for email automation. However, there was a massive time cost in terms of you know, getting out and doing networking, getting out and doing live talks, driving around and doing these presentations, which I do not regret a single bit of that. And if I knew back then what I know how to do now in terms of targeted online marketing and the reach that we have in terms of online media, 
I maybe would have done a little bit better of a balance in the early days, but those live hours is how I got really good at my messaging that quickly. Which I tell this quick anecdote of my own, back to our hero here, the massage therapist, because it was by working with all those people over those two years, she became world-class at what she did, and I want you to hear this, she earned the right to set up some barriers in terms of her hours. Now, we do run into a situation sometimes where you cannot be everything to everybody. You know, the office used to be in Springfield, Virginia, and here's the person who reached out to me who worked with me in 2012, back actually when the office was in Alexandria, Virginia, and I sent a quick video update to say, hey, all services have moved online, here's why. And they responded back, well, I really want to do it in person, when are you going to be back in town? I'm like, well, we just sold everything and moved to another state. So here's a list of people that I would recommend. However, here's a video to watch that explains how the process can be the same. And this person rightfully responded, they would rather do it online. They would rather do it in person, to which I said, fantastic. The five people I recommended, all of them are phenomenal. Call them all. You'll get the same result with each one. Pick the one you like best. Wish you the best. So again, we cannot be everything to everybody, you know, even as I look at friends and family members who have retired in service-based industries, we have a right to say no. And that's kind of what this episode is about. And again, the positive disclaimer here would be that I don't intend this to be a negative tainted episode at all. Instead, we can actually serve our clients better by knowing what we do, knowing what we don't do, knowing what hours we work and knowing what hours we don't work. So there's a bit of a transition of mine to continue to set the story for the strategies of this week's episode that in the early days of what was then and still is Virginia hypnosis, now named after Virginia Satir, mind you, but back in the day, I would take the client at any specific time. I did not have kids yet. My wife was commuting long hours to Washington, D.C. for a job, so my hours were much more flexible. Hey, you want to do 730 in the morning? I'm a morning person. Let's do it. You want to do seven o'clock on a Saturday night? Hey, she's got the book club that night. I can see you that time. I had access to my office 24 seven. So why not? Then again, as my family began to grow and as I took on other projects, something had to happen. So what happened next? Now, granted, remember for the most part, as hypnotists, we're not in a business of long-term retention. We will have clients that see the value in what we do and will come back many times over. And no, it's not the game of one of these days that's going to stick. Oh, maybe it'll work this time. No, I've got a guy who I just worked with that I'm convinced I didn't, I stopped counting at one point. We've probably met 30 plus times. And no, again, we're not working on the same original issue, but he found something that works for him. And he goes just as a check-in for big projects and refocusing. It's an entrepreneurial type thing that we're now addressing, which was not what we started with. You know, with that, we've got the flexibility going on and he moved years ago. So the most recent update was, hey, you're in Boston. Okay, good. Now I'm in Florida. He goes, oh, sweet. Good for you. We can do this work in a flexible way. So as soon as I set the hours, which the first thing that I did was I saw clients at 9.30, 11, 1 o'clock, 2.30, and 4. As it was then, as it mostly is now, I schedule everything as a 90-minute appointment. I'm in an appointment. However, all throughout my office forms, which are now also online, it says sessions are scheduled as a 90-minute block, The most often it runs between 45 to 60 minutes. You know, we book the extra time, so we've got it if we need it. So if you look at that hour schedule, 9.30 to 11, and then a 1 o'clock, a 9.30 appointment, an 11 o'clock appointment, and then a 1 o'clock, a 2.30, and a 4. And I was maxing that out for three or four years running before I started to scale those hours back to add on other projects. But here's what happened. The person would call up and say, but I really need like a Sunday evening around 6 p.m. And respectfully, like a broken record, I would respond, great, I'm in the office Monday through Friday. I do a 9, 9.30, an 11, a 1, a 2.30, or a 4. What's best for you? Anything ever on weekends? Well, no, I'm just in the office Monday through Friday. And again, it's a 9, 30, 11, or a 1, 2, 30, or 4. Now, they may do the catch and release. They may have gone away and then came back and popped up and go, oh, I can do the Thursdays at 4. Well, great. How about we go ahead and schedule all the appointments in? That way you've got them. It's easier to move them than it is to add them, which is somehow a bit of logic that still doesn't make sense, but always worked. 
it was always easier to move an appointment than it was to add a new one. Figure that out, logic people out there. So again, as soon as I set those hours, what happened was people made it work. And not just because the Universal theme park is right around the corner with the new Velociraptor Jurassic Park ride, because yes, indeed, life finds a way. So people would call up and ask for specific time frames, and just those were my set hours. Now, clearly the phrase nowadays is that seeing hypnosis clients is not the only hypnosis thing that I do as I do consulting, as I run my group communities, as I run classes. You know, these days, typically I max out my calendar seeing about seven or eight appointments a week, even on top of all the other projects. And with that, it's either an 11 or a three. And it's usually four days a week that I'd open up and then kind of, you know, reverse engineer the calendar from there. So what I'm getting at though, All of you, right now, set your specific hours because it also makes it so, yes, we always will have some bit of an admin project to address. Yes, we'll always have something that also needs our attention. You know, I know people who have built empires by the game of, and and other many episodes, and those of you inside of Hypnotic Business Systems have seen the ways that I just don't have no-shows. It's just a non-existent issue, the way that I teach people how to run their businesses. If you've got that as an issue, go to jasonwebinar.com. It'll give you a free 45-minute business lecture, whole business workshop, free and on-demand at jasonwebinar.com. And you'll see exactly one of the systems to negate the issue of no-shows. You should not have that problem in 2021 and beyond. But by setting those hours, people fit into those hours. And over time, it evolved. There was at one point a 10, a 12, a 2, or a 4 And no, it's not that my sessions became longer. It's instead that I was spacing things out to do my other projects. That eventually, in the last two or three years, up until I went into a marathon schedule as the pandemic kicked off and people needed help, it was then a 10, a 1, or a 4. And I would, again, be working on other projects in between client sessions. So here's the thing. When you set those parameters, it's easier to fill. Because also now there's something routine to it. Now it's easier to put those in there. So set your days, set your hours. And as soon as you do that, it actually opens you up for greater flexibility. Because now you've got control of your calendar. And again, look at my history. Those of you who have been around me long enough that I keep using the phrase that clearly seeing hypnosis clients is not the only hypnosis thing that I do. The growth that I've been capable of over the years is because of everything that I'm talking about in this week's episode. So in the intro, though, I told the story of the student who ran into a problem issue with a client, to which, let me better phrase that, it was an issue with a problem client. Not a problem issue with a client, an issue with a problem client. I always want to find a more positive way of saying things, but there is an old sales adage that, well, let's go there. Pain in the ass on the phone equals pain in the ass in the office. You know, when you've got someone making a bunch of demands, we we ran into an issue with a class that's going on right now that someone signed up on the wrong link and was expecting that they could attend for free. It's like, no. (laughs) And normally we would have, you know, come up with some sort of package to accommodate, maybe extend a payment plan, but just, oh, the demands were so heavy in terms of, well, it needs to be this. It needs to be that. The class starts at nine in the morning. I can't do that. Can we make it 930? I'm like, you're you're the one attending an event that's already happening. Hey, you know what? Maybe it was our fault that we phrased the page badly, which no, it wasn't. It was their fault. Let's just hit refund and call it a day. And again, let me throw the disclaimer. The more colorful stories are more entertaining. For the most part, the client shows up. We do the hypnosis. They get the change. And that's what we do day in and day out. So I think this goes to my sort of lecture on ethics and scope of practice and practicing clean and avoiding problems. Here's the next real big point in terms of professional boundaries. When in doubt, don't. I say this with really high confidence in what I know how to do with hypnosis. And my resume has been one where I've trained with most of the people who are out there. You know, I'm not someone who subscribes to one specific school of thought. I have my own material, but I've done training with nearly, let's just go there, everybody. At this point, I still go to different workshops and classes as well. And I've got that flexibility. So I'm very confident in what I can do. I'm also confident on some of the limitations as to the work that we can do. And I'm extremely transparent with my clients to say, for example, 
you know, I can help you to feel more comfortable in your public speaking, yet still you've got to craft your presentation and you've got to deliver it well. You know, this is why I've eventually morphed what I do. As I say, seeing hypnosis clients is not the only hypnosis thing that I do. Over on the jasonlinette.com brand, there are people who join business influence systems, but also hire me for private consulting to do that punch up on their marketing and their messaging and work on their sort of signature presentations. So, you know, I can help you feel more confident, but just like the singer, just like the athlete, it comes back to your preparation and your training and your experience. So I'm very transparent in what I do. So if there's ever a doubt, I don't have a te hesitation to respectfully throw myself under the bus and say, you know what? I don't think I'm qualified to help you with that. Or if I see there might be a more direct solution, which buckle up for some language, but it's a quote. So it wasn't my language. Here we go. A man calls me up and he explains that there's a bit of an intimate issue that he's having. And to say it respectfully, certain things are not working the way that he would like them to work. Fill in your imaginations. And if you're confused, ask a friend. And, and I say to him, well, have you been to your doctor for that? You know, even within the ICBCH, within our code of ethics, which you can see right on hypnotherapyboard.com, you know, if it's anything of a slightly sexual nature or even slightly fully sexual nature, we do not let our people work on that unless they've gotten a medical referral. And just to keep the story brief, I have seen people end their careers when their heart was in the right place, but their ethics weren't. When in doubt, ask. When in doubt, don't. So I, I'm asking this guy, have you talked to your general practitioner? Have you seen a urologist for that? Because yes, I've seen clients for that issue in the past when it was more of an emotional thing, something involving anxiety, something involving fear, some sort of backstory that they're replaying. However, there might be a very simple medical explanation as to what's going on, to which he responded, no, I'm not going to see my doctor. He's just going to convince me I'm crazy, to which I respond, I don't know if your urologist would use those words, but again, there may be a very simple explanation for this, that there's no amount of hypnotic suggestion I can throw at this issue that would resolve it. How about you go the medical route first? And if that doesn't work for you, then you know how to find me. How does that sound? Let me sidebar for a moment. Up until now, this all sounds rather professional, right? This all sounds very polite because it was. So you can imagine I wasn't yet prepared to hear him say, well, what are you? Some kind of shitty hypnotist. Okay. <laughs> to which the response becomes, well, sir, respectfully, if that's the criteria, I guess I am. Did you have any other further questions? And he hangs up on me. Now let's fast forward the story a couple of months because the man actually calls me back and thanks me because he eventually switched insurance. The insurance required he go into a physical, do a physical, and the doctor goes, anything else you have questions about? And he finally brought up the issue. No, I don't have all the intricate details, but all he said was a less than five minute outpatient procedure and back on his feet within a day, the issue was completely resolved. So again, hypnosis is not dangerous. The danger of the profession is what unfortunately, now thankfully we do run a really strong community with the work smart hypnosis community. You don't see a lot of this where people pop up in a group and go, does anyone have a good script for schizophrenia? God, no. Uh, <laughs> I've got someone, there was someone the other day who, again, don't be the hero. Do not put someone in harm. I will say this as polite as I can. I had someone on a phone call with me a couple of months ago saying that she wasn't getting results with her clients and then volunteering in another Facebook group that she could help someone who was suicidal. Do you see the danger here? So I am fully confident in the skills of hypnosis and the effectiveness of what we do. Yet let's not be the next big news story. Okay? Yeah. So when in doubt, don't. And again, notice that I'm always going from a place of transparency I'm going from a place of educating and informing, and the side benefit is, again, since I know a lot of you out there, I've been making referrals, you know? So in terms of, I talked about boundaries here, in terms of setting your specific hours, setting your specific days, you are allowed to set the specific issues that you work with. As I'm now a good dozen plus years into all of this full time, I'm nowadays mostly seeing clients for issues like quitting smoking, which I still absolutely love, as well as everything that fits inside of business confidence, which is everything from public speaking to posture syndrome, failure to launch, procrastination, things in that category. 
even to the point that I had a client, a former client call up and say, here's a new thing that I'm going through. Could you help me? And the response was, yes, I absolutely could. Yet, as it's been about eight years, I've kind of evolved to mostly work with these issues, which yes, I can help you with those. I've got time in my calendar this week. But you know what? If personally I had that issue, and it was going to be online anyway, since, you know, pandemic, if I had that issue, here's who I would call and who's I would work with. And if that's where my thoughts are going, I'm happy to work with you. Or would you like this other person's phone number? And that became a referral. So as soon as you set that boundary, as soon as you set some of those rules, now it's made my marketing a whole lot easier because I get to talk about just a few specific things. Now, I do not regret anything in my journey because just like the story of the massage therapist, by putting in all those hours and digging in, that's how I became quite skilled at this. That's how I figured out my own systems. That's what then gave me the qualifications and the knowledge and the insight to actually then teach and inform others, which the proof is right there because many people out there are working professionally as a result of the trainings that I offer. Let's not have any more trainings that are just regurgitating other people's stories and not from a place of experience. So by setting your own hours, setting your own days, and setting your own issues of which you are going to help with, you actually simplify the process. You end up better serving your clients. And from the guy who's slapped the phrase, the more we're all successful, the more we're all successful on so many things over the years, we have that ability to now send elsewhere too. Which go back and we'll link to this in the show notes. There's an episode I did on medical networking for hypnotists. And inside of that, I talk about what I do if I don't have a referral source. Go check out that other episode because there's a specific piece of language that I'll use that does leave the person better off without telling them, I got nothing for you. But again, when the call comes in, you know, you have every right to say yes, you have every right to say no. But if I can give everybody a bit of a strategy before the previously foreshadowed upgrade to client-centered hypnosis, here's a strategy which has saved me many times over the years. The strategy is when you have a concern, when you may see a place where there could be a potential problem, conflict, whatever you want to label it, give a homework assignment. So do you have a client who's possibly being difficult and not to get into the full story, as to the person who our student was working with, it's someone who, this is what I would have done. Basically, the core issue was there was a big decision that had to be made. And it seemed from my perspective, this person was looking for the hypnotist to solve the problem for them. When let's playfully go off the difference between coaching and consulting. Yes, I do both. You know, the work I do with my clients, I would put more into a coaching category because I'm helping you make the discoveries to better get to your own results. Then again, I also do consulting. And for example, here's someone I'm working with privately who has been a little smaller in his game in terms of his training offerings. And it just had to turn into, well, here's the way that you could redesign your courses. Do this once, see what happens differently, and let's modify from there. Good. Now you need some marketing systems. Let's have you use one of these three platforms to do your email automation. That's consulting because I'm saying, go here, do this, build that, make this video, make this email sequence, as opposed to coaching. I wonder just how much confident you'll feel as you launch this business. You see, see the difference there. So giving somebody something to do is an incredible task. Easiest thing you can do, send them your office forms early. And here's an easy frame for that. You know what? I've found that I can get the best results with people when I have a better understanding as to exactly what their goals are. So I tell you what. I've got a few more questions about this, and I do have a client about to come in, which you can say that anytime, because as long as you have a client booked in the future, you do have a client about to come in. Time is relative. Don't lie, but we can bend language in a very clever way. I want to get a better idea about how I can help you, and I do have a client about to come in. So let's do this. This is your email address. Probably already got it from the schedule. Good. I'm going to send you a link to my office forms. Even before we schedule, let me have you just take like 10 minutes to complete those documents. It's all online. It's all automated. And as soon as I receive it back, I'll shoot you a quick email or a text message and we'll set a plan to then talk again. How does that sound? I want you to hear this from the most positive place I can say it. And again, the disclaimer is this is not everybody. This is like one out of a hundred for me. 
the person who was abrasive, the person who was argumentative, the person who was not committed, the person who was likely not going to show up, the person who fill in the blank whatever issue you've run into before with clients. You've given them a simple 10-minute assignment to go off and complete online forms. It can be a printout that they snap a photo of and text to your email address. I use Wufoo for forms and I'm happy with them enough. That 10-minute task, the difficult person likely won't do it. And I want you to hear the sound effect of my hands brushing and I'm showing my hands empty, which those of you who have been to any conference or any casino in Las Vegas or any casino around the world is the official sign for dealer out when they switch out dealers at a blackjack table, roulette table, or whatever it may be. So I've done my part. I've given you a very simple assignment, which I got a verbal agreement to over the phone. And until you fill out those documents, you are not my client. The same as, you know, someone's not a student in the class until they've paid for the event. Someone's not a member of the program until they've signed up. There is an official turning point where someone's out and then they're in. And if you ever have any doubt, give a simple homework assignment. It's going to save you so many times. And let's bring it back to the positive here. You may be surprised. You know, maybe they were having some sort of weird day. Maybe there was something else going on. And this was one of the people I worked with recently, and she was an absolute dream to work with. But the first phone call was a bit odd. And I'm just saying, I, I, I'm hearing some things that I normally don't hear from people with the goal of quitting smoking, you know, and understand this is com coming from someone who says, I think too many in my industry screen too heavily. In the words of Michael Elner, you're only taking the easy ones. We can work on the motivation and the insight to make the decision to quit, as well as the quitting itself. Part of you called me for a reason, let's clean up the rest of this issue. Yet you're saying things that, I'll say it simply, in all the years of doing this, no one's ever said that to me. And that's a bit of a red flag. But let's do this. It's Monday at about 12.30 right now. Could I call you on Thursday at about the same time? Okay, good. Well, in the meantime, though, I'm going to send you a link to my office forms. And if you could complete them in full, I'll get an alert as soon as it comes in. And what we'll do is let's not schedule anything right now. You complete those forms. When I see that, I'll send you a quick message and then we'll go from there. I'll tell you how shocked I was that when within six minutes or so, they were completed. And I just called her right back. Uh, and we scheduled and we worked and she's doing great. So by giving a homework assignment, it's that sort of, uh, again, I always say compliance precedes suggestibility. It's that checkpoint, can we get back in sync because in the world of hypnosis, there only needs to be one expert in the room. They are the expert on the problems they've been facing and the issues they'd like to change. And you are the expert as to how the process plays out. So professional boundaries, setting your hours, setting your days, setting your issues. That sounds weird. Setting the issues of which you are going to help. That sounds better. As well as setting the frameworks as to how does someone actually get in to work with you. So this is a bit of an update as promised, on the principles of client-centered hypnosis, which also part of this week's episode was motivated by a good friend who did share some frustration that so much of the dialogue in the last really year and two months has been people talking about going online and that hasn't been convenient for her, that hasn't been convenient for her clients. Okay, more power to you. You have ratified the way that you love doing the work. And I get to do some occasional backtracking because there I was in 2012, 2013, when a major organization wanted me to be the voice that online sessions were bad and online education was not the way of the future. And look what that unleashed. Hello. And, and back then I was arrogant in a positive way to say, I don't do online sessions because I have no problem filling the office in person. And yet come around 2016, 2017 as referrals and Surprisingly, this podcast brings in clients. My clientele was then all around the world. And as has already been shared in here in different dialogues, go back to episode 260, the one specifically around when coronavirus kicked off. Go to worksmarthypnosis.com forward slash now online. Some of us were more ready for a big transition. And also that motivated this move to close down an office physically in person with no real immediate plans to open up anything in person soon, we're going to be doing some training events, of course, around Orlando, yet I'm keeping my boundary now that the session work is now online, unless it's something of a concierge level or private consulting, in which case, oh, we'll chat. But do you see that again, this is the beauty of what we do. We don't have to all do it the same way. You cannot be a match to every single person in the world, because I know there's a person out there 
who needs it to be a Sunday evening appointment in person. And it's okay that I'm not a match for them. There's a person out there who has a phenomenal hypnotist around the corner, yet for whatever reason, needs it to be online, needs it to be on specific issues. And you know what? I'm a great choice for that person. And as soon as we embrace that, this is that dog whistle philosophy, that as soon as you embrace the fact that metaphorically, you blow the dog whistle, you don't want every dog to come running, you just want yours. So in that situation, it's okay. And again, there's more of us out there that can help. We can make those connections. We can make those referrals. So here's the update to client-centered hypnosis. I give you all full permission to embrace the fact that you can now run a practitioner-centered business that offers client-centered hypnosis. How about that? I'll say it again. A practitioner-centered business that offers client-centered hypnosis. Because you know what? When we had water pouring into our kitchen, because I thought I could fix the water line at the back of the freezer yesterday, and short version, no, I can't. No. You could imagine the first five or six appliance people on a Sunday went, I can come out tomorrow. And then the last one I called by Lucky goes, I don't usually do Sundays, but I'm in the area. I can be there in five minutes. And I tipped. <laughs> so do you see that again, as soon as we have that, the same as, you know, the client who says, what about an emergency situation? Well, you know what? For the most part, we are not really in the emergency business. I had a client one time who did say, well, what if I have an emergency? It's like, well, if it's a real emergency, hang up and dial 911. We're working on procrastination for you writing your final paper to get your PhD. This is not an immediate medical emergency. And this is actually a person who the next day called up and said, thank you for that. She goes, I was being difficult on that. I, I shouldn't have asked you that. I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't get offended. You know, don't, don't worry about me. So practitioner-centered business that offers client-centered hypnosis. As you do that, this will prevent burnout. As you do this, it will help you serve your clients better. As you do this, we help people. Hey, Jason Lynette here once again. And as always, thanks so much for interacting with the program, for sharing this in your ongoing dialogues in the profession. You can check out the show notes at worksmarthypnosis.com. And we would love to have you there for the next Work Smart Hypnosis live and online. As many of us are now doing the work of professional hypnosis online, it kind of makes sense to learn how to do professional hypnosis while you're online. This is a massively interactive event with a lifetime access to massive online digital libraries. So it's not a training that's just a flash in a pan. The learning continues long after the event, practicing with people all around the world. If you're listening in time, we do have an event kicking off the end of June 2021. All the details at worksmarthypnosislive.com. If you're listening after the fact, Go there anyway. We've always got one coming around the corner. While you're listening to, sign up right now for HypnoThoughts Live, htlive.net. This is the largest hypnosis conference in the entire universe, and it appears to be one of the few conferences actually happening this year. It's great to see numbers dropping. It's great to see vaccine success. It's great to see mask mandates relaxing. It's great to see travel opening up. Let's celebrate this together. Join us at htlive.net. We'll see you there. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast at WorkSmartHypnosis.com. Hey, it's Jason here, and reading is lame and videos are awesome. So do this right now. Go ahead and click subscribe right here inside of this video, and that will link you to my YouTube channel, and you will be the first to find out as new information is shared here online. Click subscribe now. Stay in touch. I look forward to hearing of your success very soon.